the ability to auto scale EC2 instances is without a doubt the second greatest feature in the entire suite of Amazon Web Service products. And the great thing about it is not just the fact that, well, it's scalable as the name would imply, but it's incredibly easy to use. And if you just give me a few minutes of your time, I'm going to make you very, very dangerous with this AWS auto scaling technology. I'll show you how to create a, a launch template. I'll show you how to use that launch template in an auto scaling group. I'll show you how to set up some metrics and some thresholds so that if memory gets too consumed or there's too many clock cycles, boom, all of a sudden that AWS auto scaling group is going to take over and spin up new EC2 instance after new EC2 instance after new EC2 instance. I think you'll find it very elucidating. But the first thing we got to do is create that launch template, which is exactly what we're going to do next. I've got my glasses on so you know I mean business. To work with auto scaling in EC2, you've got to go to the landing page of EC2 and you'll actually see auto scaling all the way down at the bottom of the page there. It's almost an insult to auto scaling, but we don't want to go there first. First, we have to define what the template is for these EC2 instances that we want to have auto scaled. So we click on launch templates. I don't have one, so I have to click on that beautiful gold button there. I have to give it a name. I'll call it my launch template. Got to have a little description there. And so an example tutorial for EC2 auto scaling. I guess works good. And what we have to do is we have to define the EC2 image, the virtual machine that we want to auto scale. Now, you could have your own AMI image up here, and that might make sense. Maybe part of your CI CD process is to generate a new AMI that's got all of your software installed on it, and that's what you're going to auto scale. I don't have that set up. I'm just going to use a, a basic Linux image and I'm going to use a, a T2 nano instance type because I, I want to force scaling. So I want a, a small computer here. I think on this screen, this is pretty much all that I need to set. Oh, I almost forgot network settings. Well, I guess I don't really need any network settings here at all. So I'm going to scroll down and just click create launch template. So just imagine you've got your own AMI image or you're using an AWS template that you're going to deploy applications on when it starts up. Essentially, you've got the template for the EC2 instance that you want to auto scale. Well, if that's the case, then you mosey on down to auto scaling groups. So when we get to auto scaling groups, we can click that beautiful gold button, create auto scaling groups. I'm just going to call it my auto scaling group. I'm not too creative with names and the template, of course, is my launch template. I don't think there's too much more that I need to configure on this page. So I'm going to click next. When I click next here, it's going to ask me what subnets I want my application to go to. So I'm going to click a, a couple there. I think I can click next and get off of this screen. I'm not going to worry about load balancers, although I do have a tutorial on load balancers and ingress controllers if you want to check it out. In fact, I don't think there's anything on here that I really need to change. I am going to change the health check grace period. I'm going to change that down to just, well, I'll change it to 30 seconds. The idea there is that when a, an EC2 instance starts up, when your computer starts, it's probably doing a a bunch of initializing and starting a bunch of processes. So initially the CPU and memory usage may be abnormally high. You don't want to uh, figure out and evaluate auto scaling rules when your server is just starting up and it's, it's doing all of this work. So that would skew the results. So usually put a, a little grace period in there. The default is five minutes. I put it down to 30 seconds. Uh, more often than not, you'll probably make it higher, like 10 minutes. But I'm going to click next there. Uh, the desired capacity. So I'm going to start off, say, with two instances. I'm not going to get upset if it goes down to three instances running. And maybe the max is five. If things get busy, I want it to spin up to five instances. But I don't, know, I don't think my wallet can handle any more than that. So I'm going to leave that alone. Now, what is the target that I want. 
Well, my target is going to be CPU utilization. So I'm going to keep track of average CPU utilization. And specifically, if it goes over 30%, I want to set off an alarm and spin up a new EC2 instance. There's an instance warm up there, but I think we overrode that in the previous setting. I always like to prioritize availability. So I'll do a launch before terminating um, an instance. You can specify your behavior there that you like for cost controls, flexibility, or a mixed behavior. I don't think there's anything else here that I need to select, but what I want to select is monitoring. Enable group metrics collection within CloudWatch. I think we're basically done here. When I click this beautiful gold button that says create auto scaling group, boom, that's gonna kick things off. And my launch template is going to start. I said the initial capacity was two, so it's going to try and kick off two EC2 instances. Those will probably be pretty happy with low CPU usage, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into those EC2 instances once they've started up, and I'm going to run a little tool called Stress, which will put a lot of stress on the CPU. Okay, a very quick interruption here. A couple of things. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please like and subscribe. I don't know why, but the YouTube algorithm hates me for some reason. So every like, every comment, every subscription goes a long way in just shaking up the algorithm. And maybe some of my videos will get more than 500 views. A couple of other things. I've been working hard with Darcy DeClute. I helped her publish the Scrum Master Certification Guide recently. If you're interested in Scrum, getting certified and advancing your career in that sort of project management management arena. Check that out. Also, I've got my latest book coming out, Hibernate Made Easy version four. If you sign up for my newsletter, I'm going to be raffling a couple of copies of that off when it finally gets released. And lastly, I've been working really hard to help people enhance their career, enhance their resume and get AWS and Scrum certified. So if you check out certificationexam.guru, you'll see a whole bunch of practice exams that are designed to really help you hone your skills and get certified on the first try in Scrum, Solution Architect, uh, DevOps, Cloud Practitioner, even Java certification exams. So if you've got a second, please check that out. And if you want to get AWS certified, that is definitely the place to go. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Let's get, let's get back into the DevOps. Okay, I do want to dig around on this auto scaling group couple of things I want to take a look at. You want to keep a, an eye on the activity. That tells you what's going on and how auto scaling is working. Not much in there right now. It's just saying to me, hey, you know, when we started off, there were no instances. So we started off two according to the policy. That all looks good. There's monitoring where we can monitor the EC2 instances and monitor the scaling. Not too much going on right there might be some historic data, if anything, that's showing up there. And you might want to see instance management, right? We do have two instances running. Now, I'm going to do something tricky. I'm going to go into this instance right here, and I'm going to connect to it. And once I've connected and tunneled into this instance, I'm going to install a little program called Stress, which puts stress on the CPU inside this instance. So in order to do that, how do I install it? I think it's just a, a little yum command. So I say sudo yum install dash y to confirm everything stress. So this should install this little tool called stress, which allows me to put a lot of pressure on the CPU, which should set off an alarm and trigger auto scaling. See the EC2 instance auto scaler moving from two instances to three to four to five. So on this one instance, after that's done, I'm going to say sudo stress dash dash CPU two. So put pressure on C two CPUs, although I think this nano instance only has one. And the timeout is how long to do it for. So I'm going to do it for five minutes. So that will kick off some major CPU usage and what we're going to do is we're going to go into that auto scaling group and maybe keep a, a little bit of an eye on some of the activity, maybe even monitor those EC2 instances and see if any, any CPU usage starts going through the roof. But really, 
what I want to be looking at is this activity. I want to click refresh and see if any alarms have gone off from this added stress I've put on my system and see if they are spinning up any new EC2 instances using auto scaling. So we click refresh, take a look if there's been any new events and oh my, that stress test has caused a large number of auto scaling events to have happened there. And it looks like it's going from two to seven instances. Let me go and take a look at the monitoring for a, a quick second here. And you can see, yeah, there was definitely a, definitely a spike in CPU usage on that one uh, virtual machine, one EC2 instance. And since it's an average that gets calculated, that would cause a lot of scaling to happen there. Now, let me take a look at these instances. I thought I set auto scaling at five, but this looks like there's actually a lot more activity than just spinning up five instances. And it looks like it's set the capacity to seven for some reason. And if I look at the number of instances, yeah, I've actually got seven instances running right here. So I think I may have actually messed something up with auto scaling. So let me go look at my auto scaling group and I'm gonna click the desired capacity. And I thought that I had clicked uh, seven as the limit, but for some reason, I guess my finger was, I don't know, on the keyboard. Maybe my cat walked over the other keyboard or maybe I hit this number here, but I didn't want desired maximum capacity to be 200,000, I wanted it to be five. So. I better do a little update. I don't want seven. I want that to be five. Keep that as five there and update. Okay, and now that looks just a little bit better. I don't think that's gonna um, cost me trillions like having 200,000 instances might. Boy, that was close. Um, and now let me go take a look at some of the activity that's going on here as well. And so it looks like we've got a little bit more work happening here. Auto scaling group and an instance was taken out of service in uh, reaction to the desired and actual capacity. So I wasn't intending to demonstrate scaling down, but it certainly looks like that is what's happening here as well. So, okay, there you go. That is uh, actually an interesting little look at how we can do elastic scaling with auto scaling and EC2 instances and something to just remind you, keep track of the maximum number of EC2 instances that you can scale up to because uh, yeah, that might actually bite you in the end when it comes down to paying your AWS EC2 instance bill at the end of the month.